Okay guys, Red Prepping here. So, I feel like we really need to discuss what, at, at least Australia's plans, people, people in Australia, what our plans are for potential rolling blackouts, especially on the East Coast, uh, South Australia, um, WA, Western Australia seems to be okay at the moment. They may as well dig a trench down the border and uh, become their own country. I can say that being a fellow, or well, born and bred, Perthite uh, in West Australian, so uh, yeah, they seem to be pretty self-sufficient uh, and and okay at the moment. But the Eastern Seaboard and uh, you know of Australia, we're we're looking down the barrel of potential rolling blackouts over the next however long, and regardless of that, we're looking at high prices as well. So, what can you do to prepare for that? Well, I. As I've said in previous videos, the easiest, probably the quickest and easiest thing to prepare yourself for that is to get a petrol generator. Um, for most people uh, living in urban settings, um, you know, being fairly close to neighbors and, and things like that, you're not gonna be getting a massive 12 kilowatt uh, diesel generator. It's, that's just ridiculous. They're heavy, hard to move, really noisy. Um, it's going to chew a lot of juice and you, you don't, you don't need that amount of that size to run the essentials, uh, in the event that you lose power for a period of time. And bear in mind that we're talking here about rolling blackouts or even load shedding, which means that you, you may lose power, but maybe only for a few hours or a day or load shedding, they might periodically shut power down to air, certain areas. Uh, and restrict the amount of power that, that's available. Um, so we're not talking about extended, uh, you know, weeks long uh, incidents here or, or situations here where you where you don't have power. I'm talking about how can you keep your refrigerated uh, food and your frozen food um, uh, from spoiling uh, in the short term and how can you keep some lights on and charge your, uh, electronics, phones, computers, things like that. Maybe even, uh, medical equipment, uh, for some people. So I, um, I have a generator. It's a 3.5 kilowatt, uh, generator. It's a Gentrax, uh, Chinese as they pretty much all are. Uh, it's not an overly expensive generator. It's one, probably one of the cheapest on the market, but it's, uh, it does the job and I'm not using it every single day. I start it up every uh, two or three months or so and um, make sure it's running and check it out, run it for a while, put it under a load um, with a bit of fresh fuel and everything just to make sure that it is, is running. Uh, you know, I, I personally couldn't justify the investment of two thousand two and a half thousand dollars $2,500 for a Yamaha or a Honda of equivalent or even less capacity uh, that I'm just not using on a regular enough basis to, to justify. I just need it to get me through uh, a situation where we lose power for a fairly short period of time. Um, so the website I got that from is called Outbacks. Uh, it is spelt, it's an Australian uh, company. So for people uh, elsewhere, this may not be relevant but it's spelled uh, O-U-T-B-A-X, so Outbacks. Uh, and if you jump on their website, they've got a really large range, really, a fairly large range of uh, generators. And they range from around six kilowatts to as small as 800 watts, um, which is their, their mini pure sign uh, generator, pure sine wave generator. Uh, Honestly, I think for a lot of people, you could get away with, if you really had to, if you really strapped for cash, and it, we know a lot of people are these days, you could get away with the 800 watt generator if you're smart about it. Um, reason being is I, I took some details from my fridge freezer, which is a Westinghouse side-by-side -side, uh, 600 litre uh, or 21 and a half cubic feet um, for any Americans watching, um, fridge freezer. So the surge watts on that fridge freezer, and this is, this is a fairly large fridge freezer, 
Um, so I imagine a lot of families are going to be around this sort of size fridge. Um, so the surge watts on that is 670 watts. So bear in mind what surge watts are. Surge watts are when a motor starts up, it draws an excess amount of wattage and, and uh, amperage until it gets going. And then it'll settle down to its run watts and run amperage. So 670 watts, now you round that up to 700 and say, look, you know, in certain circumstances, maybe it's going to pull a bit more to start. Uh, hotter weather can do that, uh, things like that, certain environmental factors. So you've still got basically 100 watts in the bag with this 800 watt generator. And the surge is only for two to three seconds and then it settles back down. So once it settles back down, my fridge uh, freezer is running at about... Uh, 160 to 140 watts, somewhere in that range. Um, so depending on how you use it, you can you can get away with that. And and this 800 watt generator is only 329 dollars. That's really cheap uh, for something that will run the average fridge. With also, if you're smart about it, the capacity to run some LED lights. So I have also. Uh, a, a LED light stand with two two LED uh, down light lights in them, if you, or globes in them, if you like, and they when they both of them are on, they're pulling ten watts. It's nothing, but it's enough light if you don't have anything else. And with that, you can supplement with uh, uh, you know lanterns, battery operated lanterns, and uh, candles and things like that. So, um, you know that that's ten watts. That's nothing. So even if the fridge was to start up and pull 700 watts and you had the lights on, it still wouldn't reach that 800 watt maximum. Um, the, uh, the uh, yeah, and then you've got things like charging your electronics, maybe a computer or something like that. They don't pull a lot of wattage. Um, they're not surging or anything like that. So you could get away with the real basics uh, of your refrigerator, fridge freezer, uh, some basic lighting and, um, and, and charging your phone basically, uh, which I think, you know, in an emergency, that's all you're really going to be worried about, especially if, like I said, it's a rolling blackout. It may only be for a few hours. So, you know, we're in winter here as well. Don't forget at the moment in Australia and especially in the Southern States, uh, of Australia, it's pretty cold. So even if your fridge and freezer was switched off for six hours, you're still going to have, at least in your freezer, your frozen products uh, are going to probably still be okay. Most of them are still going to be okay. Ice cream might be a bit soft. That's not a problem. <laughs> um, so, you know, and, and the other thing is that there's other options to extend the... Um, uh, or to, to preserve the cooler temperatures, the lower temperatures in your fridge from your freezer. So you can do things like right now, you could get an empty uh, uh, soft drink bottle, soda bottle or water bottle or something like that. Fill it up with water three quarters of the way, put it in the freezer, freeze it up. If the power goes out, you got a few of them, you can put them in your fridge while the power is out and that will continue to cool uh, the fridge like an esky or a cooler, as the Americans call it, or a chili bun, as the New Zealanders call it, across the ditch. Um, so, you know, you can use things like that to lessen the amount that you need to use the generator, uh, you know, and save a bit of fuel and extend the amount of time that your products will stay cool and at a reasonable temperature. Um, also, being in winter, there's probably certain things in our refrigerators that we put in there all the time that, you know, in these cooler temperatures would still be okay out in the open as long as uh, they're in a cool sort of dark space, uh, you know. So you, certain vegetables and fruits, apples for instance, and things like that, don't necessarily need to be in the fridge uh, all the time, especially in, in the cooler temperatures. So you can play around with things like that and be a little smarter about it, uh, about what you're putting in your fridge and, and things like that. Outside of that, uh, you know, if you didn't have a generator, you can go down the road of an esky cooler uh, type thing and having some ice in the fridge or some, some blocks or bottles uh, 
of ice um, and you can put your most uh, you know uh, vulnerable foods in there your meats and things like that uh, from your freezer or your fridge you can put them in there uh, and you know that will keep things at a reasonable temperature for a shorter shortish period of time um, so you can guarantee that if we start seeing rolling blackouts, generators are going to fly off the shelf. Um, because this happens not just with rolling blackouts, but this happens in natural disasters. Uh, a lot of um, Americans will know, uh, especially in the southern states, Florida, it happens every year. Hurricane comes in, destroys the place, people don't have power, and everyone floods out to get generators along with food and supplies and things like that. Get it now. Um, you, you won't regret it. This, this generator, this 800 watt, watt generator, the specifications, honestly, you could chuck this just about under the bed. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily recommend keeping a petrol uh, motor under your bed, but it's pretty small. Uh, it weighs, what's, uh, I think it's 8.1 kilos, uh, which is, or eight and a half kilos, which is, What's that? I think around 16 or 17 pounds, maybe something like that. Um, it takes, uh, the fuel tank is 2.1 liters. Uh, so, you know, a little over two, gal uh, sorry, a little over half a gallon. Uh, and that is said to operate for continuous operation. And I'm assuming that's at the higher load, higher uh, low wattage load uh, for about six hours. So, you know, you're getting, uh, you know, a fair amount of runtime for, you know, not too much fuel. I mean, at the moment, if you ran it for 12 hours a day, which most people wouldn't, you'd be cycling it on and off with a lot of things and, and you wouldn't be running it necessarily constantly. But let's say you did and you went through around four liters of fuel. At the moment with fuel costs, it's gonna cost you about eight bucks a day. It's not cheap, electricity is much cheaper, but you know, the other option of losing all your food that you might have prepped uh, and being able to keep the lights on and, and things like that, charge your phone and not have to fight everyone uh, for a generator at that time. Uh, you know, this thing's honestly, in my opinion, worth it. Um, the other good thing is that it's a four stroke motor, uh, which means if you're not uh, familiar with that, it, you can just run it off straight unleaded petrol, uh, 91 octane, which is our lowest octane in Australia. And it, that saves a lot of hassle with having to mix uh, two stroke oil in with a two stroke motor. Um, also the, the four strokes tend to be, uh, quieter. They haven't got that tinny sound to them, like the two strokes. Um, so yeah, honestly get out there and get it now. This is on, they're purely online outbacks. Like I said, it's $329. Uh, some, depending on where you live in Australia, you may get free shipping with that, but honestly, $329, then get yourself a jerry can, 20 liter, five gallon jerry can, fill that up with this little generator. Um, you know, that's going to run you for, what's that, uh, six days of running, like a week's worth of running just about off 20 liters. So it's, it's worth it. It's worth it to have it. It's going to keep the basics running. It's going to save you having to fight people to get a generator if, and when this happens, uh, or missing out completely. Um, you know, and so that's, I guess, petrol generators, but that doesn't suit every situation. And that's things like people living in apartments and uh, unit complexes or you know, things like that. And also just not necessarily wanting to alert people to the fact that you've got a generator. You, a generator, you may have neighbors knocking on your door saying, can I charge my phone? Uh, you know, and you may not want that. So the other option is uh, solar generators. Um, now this does become a bit more expensive uh, you know, I'm just looking in Australia at uh, Dick Smith. They've got the EcoFlow River, um, and that's seven hundred dollars, and that's a six hundred watt unit, um, two hundred and eighty eight, I think it is watt hours. Uh, so it's around forty eight amp hours, I think it is, which is not too bad for a little unit. Uh, the, the, from what I've heard, these are great units. I don't know a lot about them, but it also has an X boost that can run at 1800 watts, I think, for a short period of time. So again, this thing I believe, and correct me, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this thing 
could run my fridge uh, along with some other appliance, small appliances like I discussed earlier, um, without too much trouble because the the fridge wattages, the wattage surge wattage is, is only for two, three seconds. So I think from what I understand, the X boost system could cope with that for a short period of time. The downside with this, like I said, is cost. So $700 just for that unit. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, you, I believe that doesn't come with solar panels. So um, I think you can buy Eco brand, uh, Eco Flow brand solar panels, which I think are fairly expensive. Um, you can also buy uh, cheaper uh, solar panels, I believe, with Eco Flow and uh, with some simple modifications, putting on some different connectors, you can hook that up and get that going. But you also need the space to and the available sunlight to, you know, use the solar panels to charge the unit. Um, in Melbourne at the moment, it's been overcast mostly for the last probably two weeks. Uh, lots of cloud cover, very little light, uh, only spots here and there. So, you know, even with my solar system that I built, um, and I'm getting I'm getting some new solar panels delivered uh, shortly. Um, I think I'd be I'd be struggling to keep that topped up if I was using it constantly just because of the weather, which is again another reason why I have a generator. So. I can use my 240 volt battery charger, run the charge, you know, uh, hook that up to the generator and charge up my solar generator with the battery charger, which means that if I really wanted to keep like my fridge running or freezer running overnight, I could do that with the solar generator with the battery off that, which means I'm not having to run the generator at night. So there's so many ways you can interlink these and use them together. And that's why it is best to have a, gener a petrol generator and a solar generator if you can. But I say at the least, if you're in a situation to have a petrol generator, I would be getting that first. It's cheaper and it's probably the easiest way thing to set up and, and to get a hold of for a short term blackout situation. Um, so that's... That's what I sort of believe. That's what I do. This is, you know, my situation, the petrol generator. I ended up building my own solar generator, um, which I can do a video on uh, some other time. Uh, if people want that, um, let us know down in the comments if you're interested in that. Uh, and, you know, we're being told already through the media that, and, and from the government, that to expect rolling blackouts, this could happen and you know like if you're not if you're not thinking about that and going what am I going to do if the power goes out we don't know how long the power might go out for like I said in your area it could only be a couple of hours it could be a couple of days um, especially if we end up having uh, a lot of breakdowns with our power plants um, you know with our, our coal fire gas for uh, gas uh, power plants uh, they're aging, they're not being maintained, they're planning on shutting them all down eventually. Uh, so, yeah, it, I, I believe I actually heard that in Victoria, one of our major plants supplies, twenty coal-fired plants, supplies 20% of Victoria's electricity is at this stage down to 50% capacity because of turbine failures or failures within the equipment. Um, you know, what happens when the rest of those turbines go down? Uh, you know, that's 20% of... Victoria's electricity gone and there's not enough renewables around to cope with that. Uh, so, you know, take heed of the warning, think about these things beforehand. Um, yeah, like I said, $329, $330 for a small generator that could get you by. Um, now you want to, one, one thing I will clarify as well, tell you about is that you want to make sure you know what uh, the wattage, surge wattage especially, that your fridge freezer is drawing upon startup. That's where you need to get one of these watt meters. Uh, you can get them on eBay about 20, 30 bucks. Um, they just plug it into your GPO, into your PowerPoint, and then plug your appliance in to the front of it. And it'll give you a whole bunch of readouts. And the only real readouts that you need to worry about for setting up, for understanding what size generator you may need is 
what they call the wattage high or the highest wattage pulled by the uh, appliance plugged in. So you'll see for mine, I don't know if it's gonna come up on camera, uh, but for mine, the highest wattage was 669.9, so 670 watts. That's terrible reflection, I think. But anyway, take my word for it. Um, and then the other one is just, and you won't see anything here because it's not plugged in and running, is the just the wattage. It's just the W with the, with the it's got zeros there. Um, when my fridge is plugged in and running, that uh, readout there shows the watts it's drawing in real time, which like I said, was between sort of 160 and 140 watts. Um, the main one is the surge watch. You wanna know exactly what wattage your fridge freezer is pulling upon startup uh, so that you can then uh, align that with your generator. Um, ideally, I would say you would want double the capacity of your largest appliance or, or the, the uh, total wattage of what, what basic appliances you feel you're gonna be needing to keep things going. So if, you, if your fridge and some lights and charging your phones, which honestly they don't draw much anyway, uh, but you know, the, the real basic things, uh, if that was like a thousand watts, I'd be saying try and if you can get a 2000 watt uh, generator. The bigger to an extent, the better, because you've got that extra capacity. But like I said, Things are tight at the moment. People haven't got a lot of money to throw around. They're not willing to throw around a lot of money. I believe the 800 or even the 1200 watt generator from Gentrax, not promoted, not sponsored, feel free to. Uh, I believe anything around that size will get most people out of trouble with their fridge freezer and basic lighting and appliances. Don't expect that if you get a you know, small generator like that, you're going to be plugging the kettle in which draws 2000 watts or your toaster which draws 1000 watts. It, we're talking about short term issues here, not living in luxury. Um, you know, so like I said, take heed of the warnings. They're telling us now already to expect rolling blackouts that they probably, they may occur, they probably will occur. Um, and we need to be prepared for that. You know, uh, we've seen what happens when things go bad and there's, there's shortages and certain things. People go crazy and you don't want to be part of that. You want to be the one sitting at home that's like, well, I've, I've covered myself, you know, I'm okay. And, uh, you know, that allows you also to help other people where you can, help your friends, help your neighbours, your family. Um, that's another major reason why we prepare. We're not just preparing um, for ourselves. We're preparing so that, we don't have to worry so much about ourselves and we can then assist others. So take, take it in, into account, uh, have a look online. There may be better deals out there, other brands you might want. It, in my opinion, it really doesn't matter what you buy as a generator, if it's just a backup for a, for a blackout situation, uh, it's better than nothing. So, um, yeah, let us know what you're, what you're thinking. Give us some ideas. If there's any other ideas out there you guys are using to prepare for potential blackouts, um, what your thoughts are on that, any other recommendations for generators in Australia, especially, um, you know, thoughts on things, uh, you know, in, in that sort of area. Really um, uh, keen to hear what people are doing, what they're planning and what they're thinking. So leave a comment down below, like and uh, share it around if you found this useful and uh, we'll see you in the next video.